was a customary thing to reawaken um, uh, the promises that they've made to each other. And of course, this is the purpose of, of renewing their vows. And it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good thing to do. And some people feel the necessity to do it or they just, or they just want to do it. And um, uh, uh, I had a very good service myself, a man and myself, the first time around. So we've, we've never renewed our vows. And, uh, but there are times that people feel they want to do that. And so we, we, you've got our full cooperation. Um, I might walk around later and say, oh, yeah, I, think, I think you need to renew your vows. Yeah, I'll look at you. You need to renew your vows. <laughs> Excuse me, I try my glasses. It's just a sign of it's just a sign of age. That's all. It's just a sign of age. That's all it is. You know, when you get over over fifty, over fifty, you drop your glasses from time to time. Okay, we're going to talk today about the value of people and friendship. Why would you talk about the value of people and friendship? Isn't it obvious? No, I don't think it is obvious, and I don't believe that people place. The value of people, friendships, relationships, and family that they once used to. And I think I think in family life today there's a lot of distractions. I mean, there was a phone just going off then. Some someone didn't switch their phone off just then, so there's a distraction already even in the church meeting. Um, families seem to get pulled apart quickly. Divorces higher than what it ever was. And it must be a terrible thing to go through and overcoming some of the stigmas that you go through as a result of a broken relationship, whether it's a, a close friend or whether it's a divorce or whether it's a, a long-term friend that you've had or something like that. It, it, it hurts to lose a friend. It's sad to lose a friend, isn't it? It's great to gain a friend, but it's not always that easy to, to gain friends. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, when you're a little kid, do you remember when you're a little kid, you know, you might meet, for example, uh, your neighbours, your, neighbor, your next door neighbours might meet together and they've got little kids and you're a little kid too and straight away you could take to those little kids and within, with, within three hours you're the best friends in the world. Do you remember that when you were, when you were a little kid? I remember my, my, my next door, not so with Ashley, Ashley, Ashley still, uh, I'll, I'll get with you later Ashley and I'll teach you how to become a good friend. Um, <laughs> But listen, I'll tell, tell you something. I, I, do, I, I did forget to actually honour Ashley for something because Ashley put a beautiful... Um, uh, it's, a, it's a box we used down in our charity for, for cardboard and we had this really... Um, what's the word I used at church? Um, bad, box, bad looking box. And Ashley made this beautiful, um, beautiful box and painted it. So I, Ashley, I want to thank you for all the work he does after hours. Besides the work he does during the hours of the church here, and um, Ashley, you know, fixes my mower shields when I break them and welds them all up and welds my mower pins and all those, all that sort of stuff. And so he's, he's, he's a great friend, and um, it, it's no wonder Michelle took a liking to you, Ashley. That's all I can say. And um, I did their wedding too many years ago, and um, when I met when I met Philip and Arthur. I, I, I lived next door to Greeks growing up, and uh, the Greek lady, um, uh, Esther, Esther was her name, she got saved in that church down at Webster Road. Remember our church, for those that were around Webster Road? She, she received Christ, and she got born again, and, and her daughter got born again, and her other daughter got born again, and their husbands got born again. The whole family got saved, and it was really amazing. Esther got saved, and Esther came to church, and she, she used to bring some Greek cooking to church, you know, with, with the with the dusting, you know, with the, um, uh, the icing sugar, the dusting over the special shortbreads and things like that. And they could make certain things certain ways. So Esther, you know, she was a, a lovely lady. We got to know her and um, I visited uh, over there just a few years ago and I, and, and I saw her son, who before her son left a message and, and she was dying of dementia, unfortunately, and my mum had just passed, so I thought, well, I'd better go over there and talk to the neighbours, etc. But I remember meeting... Philip and Arthur Moraitis, and we were about five or six years old, and Philip and Arthur straight away became uh, great friends. They were our best friends to my younger brother and myself. And that's how quickly, you know, children can pick up on relationships. And I think there's something, that, something childlike that we need to have within ourselves that makes us approachable with each other, whereby we are friendly, but people p can perceive friendship within us. You know what I mean? If I've got a stern 
angry look and I'm standing there like a security guard with my arms folded all the time. I'm not going to be too approachable. But f- friendship is the, is the language of God. Friendship is, 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 is the language of, of, of the church. Friendship is, 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 the, is the language of people coming together. Um, the value of people and friendship. You know, some of our, our greatest present-day challenges are the challenges of maintaining friendships, relationships, and particularly loneliness, which, which brings us to a place of social abandonment. You know, it's terrible some of the times I've been to hospitals. And I remember many years ago visiting a Freemason hospital down at uh, Sandgate there, and there was a man that had been lying in the bed for two years, just looking, looking up, and no one had visited that man for two years. And I thought, oh, why hasn't someone, surely someone must know him. But no one had visited him for two years. Now perhaps something had gone wrong. I don't know. I can't explain it. I never got to see the man. There was obviously chaplains and different ones there at the hospital that would go around and, and talk to him. But it wasn't the same as having loved ones and family around. We need loved ones. We need family. Uh, we need to look, at, look after each other as family if, it, if it's possible. And, uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus made himself a friend of sinners. Now, what's a sinner? A sinner is a person that doesn't know God. And because of their sins, they've actually made themselves... Uh, a, a, offensive to God or, or, or they're alienated from the life of God because of their sin. And this is why Jesus Christ came into this world to die upon the cross, to take away our sins, to bring us back to God, to give us a place in heaven so we know we have the assurance of eternal life in our hearts. You see, so Jesus made himself a friend of those who were actually offensive to himself. Now, isn't that different to the way people are today? We make, you know, we Birds of a feather flock together, but Jesus actually made himself a friend of sinners. Um, and he did this because he understood the value of the soul and for the need for people to be loved. And so when you see people, you've got to see that people are not just about a personality, they're not just about age, they're not just about their funny ways, or their funny um, habits or something like that, but people have a soul, and that soul is eternal, and your soul is eternal, my soul is eternal. We, have a, we are a spirit, soul, and body, and that spirit and soul is eternal, and we need to value people because of their soul, and that's why Jesus made himself a friend of sinners because he could because he put so much value upon the soul, and and there's a need for people to be loved. You know, Jesus in his humanity was was a, was the friend of sinners, and um, uh, without friendship, you know, we're lonely without friendship. You know, we can be close to we can be close to family, and we can, we can still have a good family life. But we, we need the social interaction of friends. I mean, just to keep a, a, a normal, sound, healthy sort of mind, to stay emotionally sort of sound, to stay uh, socially adjusted and not socially maladjusted. We need the association of friendships. We need more than mum and dad, brother and sister. We need friendships, relationships, perhaps with people with things in common, and it most probably will be with people in common, but sometimes it'll be with people who don't have things in common. But the amazing thing, what I find about people, is when you get to meet people and get to know people, you find that there are a lot of things that you have in common with people. So, without friendships, we truly are left in a state of loneliness if all we have it's just family without the social interaction of friends. Birds of a feather flock together, but this was not the value nor the opinion of Jesus. It wasn't the value or the opinion of Jesus. Um, Jesus did not have this, have this kind of a opinion. He didn't have this kind of belief. The Son of Man, the Bible says, has come to actually seek and save that which is lost, Luke 19 verse 10 says. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 24, that if a man wants a friend, he must show himself to be friendly. So there must be something in you which actually puts out a bit of friendship. Uh, we have a lot of birds around our home. Um, for example, we had a, for several years we had a run of kookaburras. And the kookaburra is my favourite bird. I love feeding the kookaburras and the kookaburras would come and sit on the rail and then I'd get to pick the kookaburras up and then I'd throw them back into the tree, then I'd put the meat out, they'd come down and then I'd hand feed them the meat. And then I'd pick them up and throw them back up into the tree. And now we've got lorikeets coming around, and, and lorikeets like bread and honey. So I haven't got to do, do much as far as feeding them. But, you see, I'm making myself 
uh, a, friend of, a friend of the birds. See, if I make myself a friend of the birds, then the birds will come around. You see? But you've got to be friendly to the birds first. You've got to put something out there. You see, and, and, and as people, we have, to, we have to put something out there, don't we? We've really got to put something out there. So we've got to sow friendship before we can reap friendship. It's a bit like you've got to put logs on the fire before you get heat out of the fire. And so um, uh, a, a man must show himself to be friendly. It shouldn't be that hard to be friendly. I mean, even if someone appears to be unfriendly, you can still be friendly. If someone is not nice, you can still be nice. You, know, you don't have to be like them if they're grouchy. You don't have to be grouchy. You know, don't allow people's bad moods to dictate how you'll be towards other people. Now, everyone can have a time of where they're a bit tired and irritable and a bit run down and they mightn't be in their best mood. But everyone goes through that. If someone's, if someone's really mean, you can be nice. You can be nice to people. You can be nice to everyone. There's no reason why you can't be nice to everyone. You can be nice to the unnice. Let's say that. Let's be nice to the unnice. So I'll be nice to you, and if ever I'm unnice, you'll still be nice to me. That's a good deal, isn't it? So our... our uh, our attitude towards people must develop and actually reflect our maturity in Christ. That's what friendship does. It, it, it reflects our maturity in Christ. And so there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 24. Now, I believe this has a very broad application. Some people say it's, it's Jesus. Some people say um, that's your wife. The, the scripture actually is with your wife. Uh, but it's a little bit hard to say that, you know, particularly if you don't have a wife, well, you know, then I'm really in trouble. Um, but I, I believe it's best described with what David had to say in the writing of Psalms, in Psalm 27 verse 10, when he said, he said that when my parents forsake me, when my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord, the Lord will take me up. The Lord will take me up. And I, I think this is probably the best way to explain that the friend that sticks close to the brother. Yeah, you know, I heard when I, was, I went down to a Hillsong conference, um, oh, it was well over 10 years ago. Um, uh, gosh, it was so busy. There was so many people down there. And I heard a lady by the name of Christine Kane talk. And Christine Kane, you know, you'll see her on Christian television. And she comes up. She comes up from time to time. Do you, do you get that? Do you watch that daily Bible app that comes through? And, you know, Christine Kane, she comes up from time to time. And uh, she's a, a, a Greek lady. She, uh, she's probably, um, she's probably oh, no, I think she's about my age or something. Very young person. And uh, and um, she's got all of her hair, and uh, and so, um, but you know she, she she went she went she went through a terrible life, and I mean she she went through a life of going through foster homes and being abused in those foster homes, and you know went through some really really nasty stuff, you know what I mean, and and you know she was called, you know she said she said in the conference she, she, as she was being raised up, you know she was called by her foster parents and effing wog. Stuff like that, you know. They used to refer to her as an effing wog, and and she was just a little girl, you know. What I mean, growing up with that sort of abuse, you know, it's, it's, it was pretty tough. And I think isn't it amazing, you know, that God can come into a lady's heart, come into a person's heart, and, and change to where that lady is now a minister, helping young girls coming out of sex trafficking overseas and things like that. And then, you know, of course, we know the story of Joyce Meyer. <laughs> Everyone knows Joyce Meyer. No one doesn't know Joyce Meyer, but you know, she was raped over and over by her father. You know what I mean? And came to a place where she she forgave her father. Her father became a Christian, and on one of her shows, she showed the pictures of her father actually being water baptized. He got saved and got water baptized before he before he died. And 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 God forgave that man's sins, and he's, he has a place in heaven. And he knew within his heart that God had forgiven him, and he become a Christian. And you see, so Jesus was 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 a friend a friend of sinners. And you see, when we make a friend of sinners, God can change people's hearts. When we make a, a friend of sinners. You know, if God, if if Jesus made a friend of sinners, and how, how how much more for us that he that he 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 likes us, he loves us, and we know that we're accepted in the beloved, as as Ephesians one verse six says. You know, the the concept of Christ's friendships bring brings Jesus actually closer 
and makes him more flesh and blood for me. You know, I know that Jesus is my Lord, he's my saviour, he's my God, he's the one that died upon the cross for me, he gave his life, he gave his blood, he, he did all the, I mean, sort of they're the elements of God, they're the fundamentals of God. But when I think about Jesus as being my friend, then, then, it, then it makes him flesh and blood. And uh, I know that there's, uh, you know, I spoke about the voice of God and discerning the voice of God and, and, and uh, I didn't expect everyone to agree with me with what I said, but I, I think that, that uh, you know, Jesus said that my sheep know my voice and I, I think when God speaks, I think you'll, you'll be able to know when God speaks. It's a bit like if I say, um, Phil, you know, Phil will say, oh, that was David's voice. He's not going to say, oh, that was um, um, Patrice's voice. <laughs> you know, we sound different, don't we? Just a little bit, not much, you know. But, um, um, but you, know, um, you know, if I call out, you know, my, my daughter's name, Tash, you know, Tash knows that, that, that's, that's Dad calling, you know. And, and, and I think there are times in life, you know, you know, like, as I say, the Holy Spirit, he dwells in our heart by faith. He's, he's not in heaven. Up, he's not up in heaven, you know, you know. If he's up in heaven, the Father has to be shouting, David, David, quickly, do this, do that, do that. Go and visit this fella here. You haven't got to the hospital yet. Ring this bloke up quickly, yeah. Father be shouting, but the Holy Spirit dwells in the heart by faith, and the Holy Spirit speaking in the heart. And there are just, but there are times that the Father will speak to you. And I remember the most profound, prolific time ever that God spoke to me when I was just, I was just a young fellow. I was in Melbourne. I was trying to find my way with God. And I, I felt God had called me to the ministry, and and Jesus spoke in my heart. He said, He said, David, if Jesus was twenty three and on this earth today, you'd be good mates. And that meant everything to me. And that made Jesus like the flesh and blood. That that made him the friend that I needed. And, you know, when I started preaching in, uh, for the Christian Heritage Centre churches back uh, in the late 80s and stuff, I'd share that testimony. And, you know, this lady I remember from Tweet Heads, Christian Heritage Centre Tweet Heads, she was sitting down there and she came up to me you know, and she said, you know, David, when you were talking about that, that Jesus was, your, was, was, was like, a, you know, like a good mate or a best mate or you'd be good mates. And I, I thought to myself, how do that, does, that, does that relate to me as a woman? And, and you know what the Lord spoke to me? He said, to you, I'll be an older brother. You know, see, see, Jesus brings it down to human terms, you know, and um, he loves us and brings, and brings us down to human terms so we can always understand. But God, what does God say? He said, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. You know, how, how, how do you do that? You know, how, do you, how do you do that? You've gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you, you, you can't just sort of run in and out of church. You've got to get to know people. You've got to talk with people. You've got you to get to know people. That's, that, that's, that's, that, that's God's way. That's God's method. And... Um, and so, you know, this, this is very broad. You know, when we look at there's a, a friend that sits close and a brother, uh, uh, you know, God will take us up when, 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 when our parents forsake us. I don't know how parents forsake children, but, but it has been done. Um, um, but, you know, this, this concept of Christ being my friend, it, 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 it makes it more of a flesh and blood relationship to me. And that, help, that just helps me, you know. So that God isn't in heaven, that God just isn't in my heart, but God is with me as, as a friend. And, you know, and friends, friends have things in common. Friends do the same things. Friends like eating the same pizza, don't they? They like going to the same fish shop. Um, what else do friends like? Um, uh, Go-kart racing, uh, something, motor racing, whatever. Sewing, if you're a lady, I don't know. Um, Sorry, I don't mean to sound sexist. <laughs> I mean, men might so as well. Uh, Michael, please get out in the needle and, and a cloth and help me out here, please. Um, yeah, I, wanted, I just want to share a little testimony. You know, walking, walking down the, the steps of the uh, Abraham Lincoln Memorial years ago, my wife and myself, some years ago, we were sort of looking for a bit of direction. And this, this black lady who we'd never seen before, came up next to us and she stood with us and sort of like we felt that we knew her. Do you remember that? And we felt that we knew her. And she walked down the steps with us and she started talking with us. And she said, you know, what are you looking for? Where do you want to go? And, and, um, and uh, I said, look, thanks, thanks for being kind to us. Thanks for helping us. I said, what's your name? And she said, oh, my name is Wanda. And this was the first Wanda that I'd met since my mum, whose name was Wanda, died. And we met this Wanda who walked with us and she felt like a person we'd known 
all their life. They were, I'm sure she was a Christian or an angel or something. But it is, it's just amazing. You know, I told you a story about my daughter. She got lost in the subway in New York. And this lady, you know, and there was all these people and no one, I don't think anyone spoke English that day or something like that. But anyway, the story goes something like that. But anyway, this white lady, all right, so she felt safe. You know, the, the white lady came up to her and spoke to her in an Australian accent and told her what train to get at what time and it was about to come. A lady with an Australian accent. Could that be an angel? Could that be a messenger of God? Are angels real? Yes, they are. The Bible speaks about them. Do you have an angel? Yes, there's an angel watching over you today. Did you know that? I believe that. I believe there's an angel over me. I believe there's an angel over this church. I believe there's an angel over my home. There's an angel watching over us. He's caring us. He's one of God's messengers. He hearkens to the voice. He ministers to the heirs of salvation, the Bible tells us. And Jesus said, I call you my friends. I tell you why I call you my friends. Everything that the Father is speaking to me about, I'm revealing to you. Everything the Father's talking to me about, I'm spending time on the fountain top early in the morning. Everything he's telling me, everything he's showing me, I'm telling you, I'm revealing it to you. There's a, there's a hymn from many years ago, the people that were around many years ago, it was called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. You ever remember singing it? You see, he is friendly towards us and his attitude, his attitude in us and the attribute of his attitude in us makes us friendly. Let's always be friendly as Jesus himself was unconditionally friendly. And in being unconditionally friendly, he was without fear. Now, could you imagine, you know, when Jesus, you know, we know that he, he crossed the sea of, of, the, of, of the Gadareans to, to, to confront the Gadarean demoniac. And um, we know that there was a great storm that came up in the sea. And when that, when that happened, when that happened, the whole boat was filled with fear. The disciples were filled with fear. And you see, I believe that when they were going over, Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. He knew exactly who he was going to meet. He knew he was about to cast out 2,000 spirits and cast them into a herd of pigs and set a man free. And you know, I believe, like they do in Africa, African witch doctors can stir up storms. Had the power to do that. I had an African missionary staying with me, and there was a big bolt of lightning one day, and he, 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 went, he went into shock. I said, uh, I, said uh, I won't mention his name. I said, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, call him, I'll call him Josh, all right? I said, Josh, what's wrong? He said, oh, there was just a big bolt of lightning. I said, oh, we get that all the time. He said, oh, well, in, in Africa, the witch doctors call him down. And, and, and they, they create a lot of problems. They do. And you've got to be very strong in your faith in Africa to last as a Christian and to overcome the, the forces and the power of witchcraft, which are very, very powerful in, in Africa. I think there are other spirits that do other things here. I think probably one of the, the forces working in Australia is, is, is distraction. The devil just keeping you busy. Saints wearing you out. People wearing you out. Getting over busy, over taxed, not having energy or time to perhaps pray or study or, or connect with God the way we sometimes need to. Or perhaps you, you, you're not finding that you're connecting with God today the way perhaps you might have 12 months ago or two years ago. Demon spirits can come to distract you and to take your attention. They want your mind on other things. Um, let's always be unconditionally friendly because, you see, Jesus, if he allowed the fear of the disciples to get into him, he'd never have been able to overcome the demons in the Gadarene demoniac. See, wherever there's that little bit of fear, fear will rob you of faith. And Jesus taught us to live fearless lives. He taught us to live a life of faith towards God so that we could live fearless lives upon earth. And if we can live fearless lives upon earth, we can overcome the works of the enemy, not in our own lives, but also in the lives of other people as well. And that's what's important. See, good must overcome evil. Mercy triumphs over judgment. You see, there's good in you. And that good that's in you really does work. It's not just there as a, as a pleasant thing like a box of chocolates living inside of you waiting to be eaten. See, it's, it's, goodness is there. It's a gift. Goodness is, is, is the gift of God. It's the fruit of the Spirit. 
from Galatians 5, it's there, it's in you. You see, as good as theirs. So let it out, let it happen. Do good. And what it'll do, it'll bring the blessing of God upon your life. It'll bring the joy of the Lord upon your life as you set about doing good. It is good to do good because you feel good as a result of doing good. Um, all right, the Bible says that people in the last days, in Matthew 24, which are the days which we're living now, uh, are going to be offended. So, all right, we think to ourselves, okay, well, I'm offended a little bit more often, but that's the way Matthew 24 says it's going to be. Well, I want to say something to you. You don't have to run with that. You don't have to be one of those that are going to be easily offended. What you need to be in the times of offence is you need to be salt and light in times of offence. Okay, people are going to be offended. People are going to fall away, all sorts of things. People are going to be cranky. They're going to be offended. They're going to be cranky in the last days. Matthew 24 tells us that. Hey, but listen, we don't have to run with that. I want to quote to you a, 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 a thing, a, a reading. I, I believe Amanda found this during the week, and I thought it would be good for this morning to share this with you. He said this, T.B. Joshua, great African preacher. I, I particularly liked him. He said, a real Christian should refuse to be offended because offence is an instrument used by Satan to bind us up on the reality. Okay? So I'll say that again. A real Christian should refuse to be offended. Let's say it together. A real Christian should refuse to be offended because offence is an instrument used by Satan to bind us on the reality. You see, let me say something. Without friendship, okay, now I'm not talking about family, okay, no, 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 I know your family can be your friends as well, but, but you, need, you need friendship outside of your family. Because with, without friendship, all you have is acquaintances, colleagues, and customers. That's all you've got. Now, for example, you might know Bill down at the bank. Bill might be a bank teller, and Bill's offered you good service. All, all your life, you know, you might have banked there for 30 years. You know, I, I know our account numbers. I've known them off by half for, for the last 30 years. 32, for the last 32 years, we've had the same bank account numbers. We've stayed with Westpac. I don't know why. They haven't always offered the best service. Perhaps Amanda could offer us a better deal later. But from the Commonwealth Bank. But, but let's say, for example, I've got to know Bill, and the only reason I've banked with Westpac is because I've got, I've got to know Bill he gives me good service, and all of a sudden, one day, one day, Bill retires, and I'm walking, I'm walking down the street, and I say good day to Bill, and I think, oh, I haven't seen Bill for a while. He's given me good service for thirty years. He's got to be all over me. And what he says, good day, David. How are you? And he walks by. Well, see, that's all I had. I just had had a bit of business acquaintance. I had a man that offered me good service. I was just a, I was just a customer. The real meaning of a friend is when you have a mutual bond and affection, uh, not necessarily a codependency, but a friend that can be approached. For example, I can pick up the phone to a friend of mine in the States and just start a conversation, forgetting to even say hello. I mean, it's just like that. We can pick up after 12 months. So, oh, by the way, what we're talking about last time, and that's sometimes how we talk to each other, because we've got friendship. So, oh, good day, Jerry. How are you? Oh, how's Rowan and your wife? Uh, how are all the grandchildren? How are the kids? No, no, we don't. Oh, listen, by the way, what we're talking about last, he says all the time. Now, I know ladies like talking about all those things, don't they? Yeah, they? They like to cover all those topics. But uh, what do they say? That um, men, men, are, men, are, uh, men are headliners and women are, are fine printers. They read the fine print. Is that true? Okay, so friends are easy. They don't have, they don't have to be treated with caution and, 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 you, and you don't have to take a deep breath before seeing a friend because, you know, you feel there might be some sort of strain in the relationship. Oh, I've got to see them. I've got to see them. I haven't got to see them for some reason. Oh, Cameron. Oh, I've just got to see Cameron. Oh, I hope Cameron's in a good mood today. So I'll take a deep breath and I'll, I'll just brace myself. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, I mean what, what's the value of that? You know what I mean? Uh, a man must show himself to be friendly and to be safe to find a friend that sticks closer. And I've learned you, you, don't, you don't have to have unrealistic expectations upon people. The Bible also says don't visit your neighbour too often lest he actually hate you. 
<laughs> so you can actually try to make friends with a, a neighbour, knock on his door twice a day, and um, and think that he's going to appreciate you. You know, I found this out uh, again just recently when my daughter had reminded me that I'd been around every day last week. And so um, I haven't quite got the message. All I do now is I say, uh, look, I, want, I need to drop a bunch of bananas around. Uh, look, I need, to, I need to bring around a bottle of milk. Um, she said, Dad, I hope you're coming to see me as well. Of course I am now. Take me to the baby. Take me to the baby. Billy Graham said, if you get to the end of your life and you've got five good friends, you're doing well. That's pretty good advice, I think. As followers of Jesus, we're commanded to love one another. In 1 John 1 verse 7, well, say it with me, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one to another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Again, it's all about friendship. It's all about building relationship. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Remember that really... We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're born not of God. We're, we're, we're sorry. We're born of God, not of the not of the will of flesh, nor of man. But we're born of God. That makes it we're actually brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's often, you know, when we when we partake of this little communion cup here, which we haven't done this morning, but that bread re- re- actually reminds me that I'm I'm in a covenant relationship with you as as a brother of Christ. You know, let's say for example, David, stick it up, stick, stick it up your jumper. I'm 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 sick of you as a pastor. Um, well, people have said that before. Um, uh, you can't take away the bread. I'm still your brother in Christ. You see? You don't love me as a pastor, okay? We move on. But I'm, I'm still a brother in Christ, and that's something you can't get away from. See? And the, the, the blood of Jesus, well, it cleanses my sins, and it cleanses his sins as well. Okay. Everything okay? All right. All right, so someone's really trying to get through in a hurry, aren't they? They'll just, why don't you just answer it and just see what they have to say? Just you're listening to another message, are you? You got a bit of sermon going. He's <laughs> probably listening to uh, Joseph Prince, or uh, you know, it, it's funny. You know, when I come to church, I uh, you know people people say, oh, I heard. Uh, Joseph Prince this morning, I heard uh, uh, so, uh, someone else and, and I said, oh, well, I'm glad you got a good sermon this morning, you know? <laughs> but, you know, how much more can we call ourselves friends and, and maintain longevity with our ac- actual friendships? I mean, what sort of value... Do you place upon friendships? And are you prepared to place longevity upon that friendship? Or are you just sort of have de facto relationships with people? Everything seems to be a de facto relationship nowadays. You have people who have de facto relationships with the church, people who have de facto relationships in, in marriage, people who are somewhat marriage. But everything sort of seems to have a more of a, of a de facto, more of a contractual sort of mindset instead. But, but God thinks in the terms of covenant. God always thinks in, the word, in covenant. Covenant is love. Contractual is always based upon mistrust. And, um, and uh, people talk in this way, oh, well, we'll see what happens for a season. Well, I tell you what, a season comes and goes pretty quickly. Have you noticed how it's starting to get warm? I know I'm sorry you're using a fan. We do have an air condition, but if I put it on, you're going to be too cold. I'd rather you just use your own fan if you don't mind. You save me electricity as well. Thanks for that. It's your first morning here, and you stuck it out so far, so I congratulate you. But I tell you what, let, let, let me finish by saying this. Jesus was completely different. He had a completely different... He was completely, he was completely approachable. You know, Jesus was completely approachable. Any one of us could have come to Jesus. Any one of us. Every one of us. Actually, he says, he says all the Father... All, all, who, all who the Father... Come, will call, will come to me, and whoso will come to me, I'll in no wise cast out. He's, he was completely approachable. He, he was a friend of sinners. He, 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 made, he made a minister out of Matthew and Zacchaeus, and they were tax collectors, and, and they, were the, they, were the, they were the people that were most despised and most hated because they were like the worst 
of rotten car salesmen. Remember years ago, back in the 80s and 90s, how bad car, second, second-hand car salesmen were? Remember how bad... I, I, don't, I don't know how, what they're like today, but I mean, they were, they were sort of the worst of the worst people. And that's what the tax collectors... I'm sorry, is anyone here that was a second-hand car salesman in the 90s? Um, in case I've offended someone watching, no, there's not okay, so I meant what I said then. All right? So, um, but look at Matthew and Zacchaeus. I mean, they were, they were tax collectors. Were, you, know, you know, Zacchaeus was so rotten to the core, he says, he said, God, I'm sorry, I'm going to pay back fourfold. Who could pay back someone fourfold that they've ripped off? Who could possibly do it? He must have had a good insurance policy or something. But who could pay back? But yet, yet Jesus, Jesus could have upbraided Matthew, you know, the tax collector, for, 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 for doing what he was doing to the, to the, to the, to the Jewish people. And, and, and he, could have, he certainly could have ripped into Zacchaeus for, the, for, the, for his conduct and, and manner of lifestyle. The people who were despised and the people who hated, but yet Jesus made friends out of those people. Jesus made disciples out of the most detestable people. That's why we're all here today. You see, this is the true love of Jesus, isn't it? John was the disciple that Jesus loved. But you know, one of his best mates were, and this is one for the ladies, but it's not just one for the ladies, it's just truth. One of his best mates was Mary Magdalene. And you know, the Bible says in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus was actually supported financially by the people he actually ministered to. That's how he was supported. And this lady, Mary Magdalene, Jesus cast seven demon spirits out of this woman. And it's said in the commentaries that she's probably the person that was probably the main contributor to Jesus' ministry. We see in the Bible that she was the first to see the empty tomb. And as I've already mentioned, she was probably one of Jesus' main supporters. So... Make friends with people like this. Make friends with people who have interest in empty tombs. Make friends with people who have a love for the risen Saviour, for the risen Lord. Make friends with people who you perceive to be pure in heart because the Bible says they will see God. You see, you need to see that at least within me today, that there's nothing in me that wants to hurt you or hurt anyone or hurt people, at least intentionally. There's nothing in me that wants to hurt anyone. I don't wish to hurt anyone or harm anyone. I probably have, but I didn't mean to. It wasn't in my nature to want to do it. But we all need to have the same heart that we want to Love people and not hurt people and offend people. And again, Jesus said that offences will come, but woe to who they come through. So we've got to make sure that we don't cause offence. And if we do, we need to quickly apologise if we're aware that we have made offences. But there needs to be nothing in us that wants to hurt people, um, but to save people from their sins. And, And these are going to be our true friends. Hate what is wrong, love what is right, Because Jesus loved people and Jesus didn't worry about a thing. He didn't worry about anything. He wasn't worried at all. So when you worry next, try not to worry. Try not to worry. I want to pray a prayer to lead you to Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ would come into your heart by faith, forgive you of your sins and give you eternal life. Would you like me to pray a prayer like that with you today? You want to just raise your hand if you'd like me to pray a prayer? I'm just going to stand here. Okay? Is there anyone for the first time that might like to pray a prayer like that? I'll just, I'll just, pray, where you, I'll just, I'll just pray for you both where you are, all right? And we'll all, we'll all pray out loud together so that two people aren't just saying this prayer alone. So I'm going to make it easy for you, okay? So today, we're going to, we, first of all, we're going to believe in God. We believe that Jesus died upon the cross for our sins, to take away our sins. 
And Jesus said this, that we must be born again of the Spirit of God. That means that God can come into our hearts by faith because God is the Spirit and he comes into our heart, which is our spirit, by faith. But we have to receive him. We believe him, but we receive him. So we're going to pray together. Heavenly Father, today I come to you through Jesus Christ. I make him our Lord and Saviour. I ask you, God, to forgive me of my sins. Everything that I've done to offend God. All of my unbelief. I ask you to take it away. Help me to live for you and to believe everything that your word says. Give me the power to live a Christian life from this day forth, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, for the two ladies, do you mind if I just pray for you? Can I come over and just pray for you where you are? Can I come over and pray for you where you are? Is that all right? Okay. I promise I'll not, I won't hurt you because there's nothing in me that wants to hurt you. Okay. So, sorry, what was your first name again? Donna. Father, I pray for Donna. I ask you, God, to, to, to seal this prayer of faith that, that she's prayed this morning. And, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that today through her faith, Father, your word says that she's born again. She's born again of the Spirit of God. So, Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit that's living right now in her heart by faith will, will quicken and manifest the revelation of Christ. And, Father, I pray that the word of God will become a real and living thing to her because, as Jesus said, that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I pray, God, that you'd fill her with the Holy Spirit and I pray, Father, that she will live the rest of her days knowing Jesus. That's my prayer for you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. It was a good thing to pray for you. Now, I was playing around before and I was making jokes about your name, but I need to get your first name again, which is Mavis. Mavis that's right. You know, we had a Mavis here years ago and she was a lovely lady and I still miss her. And I, I dreamt about it the other night and I woke up and I realised, oh, Mavis passed away about 15 years ago. So isn't it nice that you've come to replace Mavis <laughs> today? There aren't many, no, there's not many, of us, not many Mavises around and the people aren't calling their children Mavis of late, are they? Okay, thanks. Now, if everyone could kill their phones, I'd really appreciate it. If you switch your phone off, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, Mavis, I want to pray. I want to lead you in a special prayer to receive Christ and uh, just like we prayed before. So, uh, Father, today as Mavis has received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Saviour, I just thank you, Father, the Holy Spirit has really come into her heart by faith today and, Father, that she, she's born of the Spirit of God. And, Father, I just pray that the Holy Spirit, which is joined to her spirit, will just stir things in her heart, Father, that she'll spend the rest of her days, the rest of her life, as I'll spend the rest of the days of my life, getting to know Jesus and to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of God and, and getting to grow in this most precious faith. And Lord, I thank you today through her faith in Christ. She has eternal life. She's been delivered from the power of darkness and has been translated into the kingdom of your dear son. So Father, I ask you to bless Mavis today and to watch over Father and to perfect that which concerns that in her life. And God, just for any family issues that she might have at this present point of time, I ask God that you resolve them. If there's any family issues, I ask that you resolve family issues. I ask God the power of Christ will touch your wrist. What's wrong with your wrist there? Did you sprain it or? or... Okay, can we, can we pray for that? Do you mind if we pray for that? Because Jesus healed everyone. Father, I pray, I, I pray right now for Mavis, and I pray, God, that you'd loosen this wrist right now. I bind the power of this carpet tunnel syndrome right now in the name of Jesus, and I loosen this wrist, let the power of Christ come into her body, and let her wrist be loose right now in the name of Jesus. God, we give you all the glory and all the thanks. Right now, in Jesus' name. Now, just check your wrist out. Just check your wrist out. You can't do it with the thing on, okay? But you can. Well, you'll, you'll, you can later. Check it out later. It's got a metal thing. Yeah, you're all, you're all wrapped up. I, I understand that. We pray for a lot of people. We see God heal a lot of people that we pray for. Yeah. You pardon? Well, one well, hospital. Yeah. Okay. We would we would have done that through a prayer request. And so, you know, there's a wonderful promise in Philippians 1 verse 6 which says that we can be confident of this very thing that God who has begun a good work in us will perform it. And there's a, another great scripture, Mavis, too, and I'll, I'll write these down for you later, and, and for you too as well. I'll give, I'll give you these same scriptures. It's Psalm 138 verse 8 which says, 
the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. He will not forsake the works of his own hands. And, you know, everything that God put together in creation, he did through the power of his words. But when it comes to, to mankind, God put mankind together through the making and through the works of his own hands. There it is there. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. O Lord, but his mercy endures forever. Forsake not the work of your own hands. So Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for touching these two lives, Father, in such a special way. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation, God. We thank you, Lord, for it's by grace that we're saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. And I thank you, Lord, for the gift of God that's been manifest here this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now let's stand up together. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Let's give him thanks. Let's just give him praise. Father, we give you praise. God, we just glorify and lift up and we magnify the name of Jesus. We glorify the name that's above every other name. We thank you, Lord, that at that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the mighty gift of salvation. Now, Lord, this coming week, as we gather on Tuesday night, we ask, God, that we grow in the revelation of Jesus. God, let our praises go higher and higher every Tuesday night. And, Father, I thank you, Lord, for this coming opportunity now for Cameron and Amanda. And so bless them. So I want to dismiss you now for uh, about 10 minutes and uh, to have a cup of tea and to go to the bathroom and to make those urgent calls that just cannot wait. So uh, please do that now. And so it's now 11.19. Can we please meet back here? Uh, just say after 11.30, okay? That gives you um, 11 minutes. And uh, so we'll be back on live stream and we'll do this on live stream. Thank you for watching us on live stream this morning. It's been a wonderful morning. Two ladies have received Christ as their Lord and Saviour. And that makes the morning very worthwhile and it makes me a very happy pastor, believe me. God bless you. Thank you.